If you're anything like me, and you're into electronics and DIY, then you've probably thought about etching your own PCBs at one time or another. I started with a traditional photoresist, ultraviolet exposure and etch technique, but I found that the toxic chemicals and careful handling required to run the process reliably just wasn't suited for my home life. I am aware that there are affordable online services which will make your Gerber files into PCBs for you, and to an alarmingly professional standard at that, but it seems a bit pointless to me to have to order a minimum of 10 boards and have to wait 3 weeks just to find out that I have designed them incorrectly, when really all I want is one or two PCBs for a one-off project. Sometime towards the end of 2017, I was inspired by some online videos of CNC routers cutting PCBs that gave me the idea. What if instead of a cutting bit, they were using a pen? My criteria for suitable pens was simply that they were fine-tipped and permanent markers. I found this set on Amazon for less than £20, which seemed promising with a nib diameter of 0.4mm. I have posted a link in the Instructable for these pens. Once the pens arrived, I went about designing a mount. I toyed around with the idea of applying spring tension to the pen to ensure it had contact with a copper-clad board, but the idea was quickly abandoned when I realised that applying too much pressure to the pen nib might deform it. Then I considered just letting gravity hold it, and using a linear bearing to keep everything together and mobile. The pen holder itself was designed so that there was an interference fit to the pen, for easy insertion and removal. The mounting bracket was designed based on an E3D V6 conversion that I had made for my 3D printer when the stock extruder failed and was out of stock for around 7 months. Now unfortunately my design is likely not directly translatable to your machine, but with a bit of creative thinking and your own 3D printer, I'm sure you'll figure it out. Back to the discussion on linear rails. I will be honest, I did not buy this part. It was donated to me by an engineer that I know. This part is a miniature linear guide rail manufactured by SKF. Checking their website I can only find links to distributors and knowing that they are designed for use in high precision equipment, they probably aren't going cheap. So, just to be helpful, I took a quick search on Banggood for a miniature linear guide rail, and this one came up quite quickly. I'm sure other websites like AliExpress will have similar products if you have a preference. The dimensions on this listing are close to the actual part that I have used, apart from the length of course. Nothing a Dremel can't fix. Once I had printed and assembled my mounting design, the next thing to do is actually mount it. My design involves removing the hot end assembly, so knowing this, I designed a simple mounting bracket to hold onto it while the printer was in plotter mode. I wanted this conversion process to be as quick and painless as possible. Before filming this, I hadn't used my plotter conversion for around six months. Needless to say, I was out of practice. Still, with all the fumbling and tool dropping that ensued, it only took me around seven and a half minutes to install. Some advisory comments, which I'll touch on again a little later on. If you're following this instructable with intent to try and recreate these results, be warned that you should have a very good awareness and knowledge of what your printer will try and do in certain situations. For example, what does it do at the beginning of a print? What does it do at the end? What does it do when pausing or moving to an idle position? We need to know this because the machine was designed with all these functions to 3D print not plot. Ergo, some of these harmless actions may ruin our plot if we aren't aware of them. Adding to this, and you might have guessed it by now, but 3D printers don't speak Gerber, they speak SDL. So in order to design a PCB layout, I needed to 3D model it. I started off making myself a little library of component footprints and other patterns that I'm likely to reuse, and save them as groups. I designed the PCB as a 2D plane and add my circuit details to it. SketchUp doesn't like this, and at some point it will throw a wobbly and say that your 2D plane isn't flat anymore. I found a way around this by breaking the plane up into a grid of 20mm by 20mm squares. When I'm happy with my layout, and I've won the fight against SketchUp, I take the plane, cut out the bits between the traces and then extrude the copper to 0.3mm thickness. This is just so it's around one layer thick. Now that I have my model, I need to figure out how I'm going to trick my 3D printer into drawing pretty pictures for me. I opened up my printer's software and fiddled with the slicer settings. I've already made these profiles, so I'll just show you what I've done to make my printer plot. 
Essentially, the tab listed as print settings doesn't matter. It doesn't really impact what the plotter is going to be doing, but you can change the speeds here if you want to. I have found that my plotter is quite happy to operate around 200% normal printing speeds, so keep that in mind when scaling your speed settings. I should also point out that although I'm saying that these settings aren't important, it is a good idea to remember that your slicer software may have put the important settings under different labels, so check them all to be sure. The filament settings tab is important. You need to set the temperature set points down to around room temperature, effectively disabling the heat bed and extruder. The last thing you'd want is to oxidise your board through heating or burn out your extruder. Most important, however, is the next tab, Printer Settings. It is in this tab that you'll be able to control the nozzle diameter, which when made smaller increases the resolution of your plot, at least until your pen starts overlapping other plot features. The most vital function of all, Lift Z. This setting is essential as it is what will stop your plotter from drawing lines across your work when it's doing simple travel moves. Not using this will ruin your plots. Finally, you might want to check the G-code executed at the end of the print. I have told my printer to lower the Z to Z200 before doing anything, which is nice because it doesn't leave any unwanted lines or marks on my board when the plot is completed. So we have a model and we have a printer profile. Next we need to position our plot. Start off by opening your design in your 3D printer software and then either making or opening a model that I'm going to call the plot locator. Personally, I'd recommend tailor making this for each design, but for now, scaling it will do. I scale the plot locator so it is about the same size and orientation as my design. I then remove my design from the object list and position the plot locator at a location that I can remember and I know that will land on the print bed. The locator is then sliced and set to plot. If everything has been done correctly, your machine should be preparing to plot. More than likely, this will be the part where the real troubleshooting will begin. Tweak the pen height, the lift Z amount, and the speeds until your machine can reliably draw lines. What you may notice is there is a kind of feathering on the right hand side of the plot lines. This is from too much pressure being applied by the mount. I pull the pen up a bit in its holder to reduce the pressure. We are only interested in plotting the outer perimeter of the locator, as it will be used to guide our copper clad board placement. If you look at the plot head when I pause and send it to an idle position, you'll notice how it simply moved without dropping the Z. I didn't remember, and now I have a line on my ceramic build plate. Once the plot is done, I use some captain tape to stick the board down where I think it won't interfere with the plot. Really, I should have given myself more breathing room by making the copper board larger than this, but it still worked in the end. Once all stuck down, head back into your 3D printer software and place your design in the same orientation and location that you placed your plot locator. Slice and check for obvious defects. It is at this point where you might consider changing the nozzle diameter settings to increase or decrease your plotter resolution. At the very least, you'll have an idea what to change once your first plot is complete. Cross your fingers and press print. Hopefully you're seeing something similar to what's on screen right now, on your own machine, and considering that this time lapse goes on for a while, I thought it would be a good time to talk about my experience with this setup. I was really surprised when I saw how precise the output of the plotter can be. I was honestly expecting a blobby mess with little hope of salvage. Using this setup I can now happily move my electronics hobby work from through-hole exclusively to a mixture of through-hole and surface mount technologies, greatly expanding the horizons of my projects. I can now design my projects smaller and more complex without having to worry about losing myself in the perforated prototype board Bird's Nest. I have noticed places where the ink is thinner, particularly in single lines and at the intersection of other lines. I haven't yet found a way of sorting this issue, but maybe some experimentation later on will find a solution. The ink is not a perfect resist, and does seem to break down when thinner. This has resulted in lines which mimic the plot moves that leave impressions in the copper surface after etching. 
It is possible that simply doing another layer on the plot may solve this, but it might also weaken the resist by redissolving previously plotted lines with a solvent that Marker uses as a mobiliser. Something I really like about this setup is that it isn't exclusively dedicated to printing circuit boards. There is also opportunity to plot onto brass, as I have had success using the ink as resist on this material. Some examples of things that could be enhanced using this plotter setup could include jewellery, brass signs, delicate forms etched out of thin metal sheet, laying out designs to be cut out of materials for hand fitting or manual machining, or if you are so inclined, simple printing onto paper, card, glass or fabrics, if they can be held rigidly. I have tried using this on steel, and the ink came off cleanly with no resistance to the same etchant. I believe there may be some chemical reaction going on between the ink particles and the copper content of these metals. Otherwise, I do not know why it works for brass and copper, but not steel. If anyone knows about this, I'd love to find out more. Now we're ready to etch the board. I didn't intend this to be an etching tutorial, but I thought I'd leave this in for authenticity. I have taken high resolution photographs of the results of the etch, with honesty in mind. This is why I've focused on the defects and close-ups. I'm sure these defects can be improved upon with further optimization, but unfortunately it's on the back burner at the moment. If you have any questions I'll be happy to answer when and where I can, but for now, thanks for watching.